So let's get started by talking about settings. So first of all, you access your settings from the top right hand side of the screen using the gear shape. Here you have your settings window, your ability to search for settings, and then some common settings like automatic replies, display settings, and also themes, which is how mine looks like Legos today. One of the very first things that we recommend for people to do once they've adopted Office 365 or migrated to it is to go ahead and set up their email signature. One of the best practice suggestions we have for you today is that you go ahead and copy your existing signature. That way you can paste it into the signature block. Let me go ahead and demonstrate that now. So I've got my signature. I can copy it. And then I'll go find the settings. So the easiest way to find the signature block is to actually search for it. I'm going to start typing signature. I don't even have to type the whole thing out before it recognizes it. So I can click to select it. I want to automatically include it on new messages and also messages I forward or reply to. I can then paste it in and then click OK. Let's go ahead and clear the settings search and take a look at automatic replies. Automatic replies allows you to set a response to people while you're out of the office. By default, of course, automatic replies is turned off. If you want to just send automatic replies, you can just turn it on and when you're done, you can turn it off. You may also want to set up automatic replies during a time frame. You can set your start time and your end time. You also note features like block my calendar for this period automatically decline new invitations for events that occur during this period, and then decline and cancel my meetings during this period. Again, these options are very specific. You'll choose what works best for you. Now, what is in the autoresponder? Whatever is in these two blocks on the screen is what will respond to people. The top block is what people inside your organization will see. And the autoresponder for people on the bottom is for the people who are outside your organization. I typically copy and paste into both blocks so that I have the same message internally as I do externally. I just want to encourage you to be sure to fill out both blocks. Of course, when you're done, you can select OK. So that introduces you to automatic replies, which is also an introduction to rules in Outlook. In addition to automatic replies, we also have the display settings. Let's take a look. The display settings have three different areas, the reading pane, the message list, and conversations. Let's start with the reading pane. Now personally, I like my reading pane on the right hand side of the window. That way I can see all the email down the left hand side and see the preview of each email I want to read on the right. I know several people, and I mean several, I mean thousands, who like the reading pane at the bottom. Two things I want to show you here. One, watch the diagram. It gives me a visual display of the setting that I am actually setting for my mailbox. Now the reading pane at the bottom gives you all the email at the top with some pretty critical header information like from, the date, and the subject, and it shows it sort of like a record view. I found that most people like that and that's why they like their reading pane at the bottom. For as many people as I've trained on Outlook, I can tell you it's equal amounts who like it on the right, who like it on the bottom, to who don't like it at all. So you can also hide the reading pane. All right, I'm going to take it back to the default setting because that's what it'll look like for you on day one. You can also apply this to all folders, which for me, I like to read my mailbox the same way every time. So I would actually like that feature. If you don't want that, if you want to control how it's set up in each mailbox, then of course you can uncheck that box. Let's move on to the message list. Right now, it sorts by sender's name first, and that's how we traditionally read our email. However, if you have a mailbox that captures information for a system, you might actually like it set for subject first because the sender name is always the same. You also have the ability to show preview text. Show preview text is set by default. If you want to hide the preview text, which again is that little bitty text that shows up to show you a little bit of the email before you read it, then you can simply hide preview text here. And then we have conversations. Most of us are familiar with reading our email by date sorts. 
we like to have the newest on top. But again, some of you like to have your oldest messages be the first ones that you see. I think it just depends on what you're doing with the mailbox. Another nice feature here is the show deleted items. So if you would, look at the diagram to the right. You notice that there's an email that has a strike through appearance. Now that email is actually stored in the deleted items, but because it's part of a conversation, it shows that deleted item in thread. Again, I like this feature. If you don't, you can simply choose Hide Deleted Items. Once you've set the settings you'd like, you can go ahead and click OK, and those settings will be set. That introduces you to the display settings. So let's take a look at the theme. First of all, if you look at the top of my window, you may have noticed that I have Legos. This is controlled by the theme in Office. I chose Legos because I look at it a lot, and I really like the Legos. Plus, I have small kids. Everybody has different preferences. If you want to change your theme, you can simply click the theme option, you can pick the one you like, and then your window will update to have that theme. Now, I'm going to change back to my Lego theme, and then when you're done, you scroll down and choose Save. 